on Tuesday, we started to talk about JSON, which is JavaScript object notation, which is a way to uh, uh, collect and transfer data. It's a uh, style of a flat database. Uh, and so we were having this exercise where we uh, were saving data to a database, so to speak, and then retrieving it. So I'm going to get back into my project folder. I've got all my images. I've got the JSON file, which defines all my data. And I've got the index file, which lets us work with it. So we'll, we'll go ahead and open the index HTML file again. Go ahead and open index HTML in Notepad. I'm going to run it in... Um, I'm going to run it in, in Firefox um, to test it. Remember, Chrome is going to complain because Chrome is going to say it's the wrong protocol. In short, we're loading our project from the file protocol instead of the HTTP protocol. So Chrome won't like that and will just shut this down. It won't work. We do have a web server software on our computers here, which is WAMP. Maybe I'll touch upon it a little bit later, but it's not quite... What's that? In Chrome or internally in, in brackets? Does brackets sort of like run a little independent server? It runs a local server. Oh, interesting. So another good check mark for brackets. But the short answer is that um, if we're just running it as a plain old file, protocol. Chrome won't like that unless we uh, run it in brackets or in a web server. So I'm just going to then uh, run it in, in Firefox and click the button. And that's where we were so far, obviously, on the front end for the, for the user. You click a button and then all of this appears. In the back end, we've already got a few... Let's see how long our code is. We've already got uh, you know, about 30 lines of code. <coughs> Um, to get that to work and the big idea is that we're interfacing with a file line 29 is where we are accessing the JSON data file uh, and then we're manipulating it back here on our get social function so what you should have is that every social network then appears here we haven't really done any styling yet we won't worry about that just yet each one is appearing on its own line it would be nice to maybe have them appear in columns three at a time and then the next row and all of that. But that requires, of course, more programming because the computer doesn't know what we want. It just does exactly what we tell it and we haven't told it to line these up in a nice way. And so it's loading up the picture, the name of the network, and the description of the network. If you recall in our JSON file, we have the name of the network, the picture, the description, and an address. We haven't used the address yet. We'll use that one in a moment. But our JSON file it just looks like a plain old text file. And that's what it is. JSON is basically a text file that then, depending on how you're using it, it can do many things. It can behave like a database. Uh, we named all of our pictures simply pick one to pick nine, and it can go up to pick 99, doesn't matter, and via the for loop that we have here, we just iterate from item to item. So this is how we're building what we see on screen here. The for loop iterates between zero and length of the social network um, object. And we're displaying a few bits of data. I want to tap into now the um, the URL of that's in our data. I want to use the URL to also make the items here clickable. Now with HTML we can set it up of course that the text itself could be clickable or the picture could be clickable. We'll try both. Uh, first I just want to make the name of the network Clickable. I want to make it an active link. That, of course, is the A tag. But notice how we're crafting our code here. I liken it that we're sort of like building like with Lego blocks. The for loop lets us build uh, something block by block. So looking at what our for loop does, it creates and then ends a div. It then 
displays an image in the div based on whatever position or index of the array we are in to show the image image tag a break and then it displays the name of the network using the same index which first off is zero so it's the first item uh, displays the name and then within the same line a little dash and then display the description I only want to dis I only want the name of the network to be an active link therefore I need to wrap an A tag around the name of the network. The name of the network is right here. So I need to start an A tag, then close an A tag around the name of the network. Um, knowing what we need to do, I could make it look, I, I know how we should do it, we should we have a way then to make it look nice but let's do it let's say we didn't exactly know how we were gonna do it yet to just compare uh, the nicer looking way so we'll do this we'll go back to line 23 let's start the a tag right there we need to fill in various properties of course and then we're gonna end the a tag and let's say we'll we'll end it over here it should highlight it should make sense starting the a tag wrapping it around the name of the network ending the a tag I'm ending it down here because this is where my quotes are, where I have valid HTML that will render. Uh, I'm putting all of this code and all of, the, all of these HTML tags and these uh, JavaScript objects, I'm putting them into this string, this placeholder, which I'm doing plus equals to get the exact name of what that operation is. But we're adding to the string, basically, and then at the end, we finally then render or write that HTML to our placeholder. So we're starting our A tag right here, ending it right here in the quotes. The A tag, of course, needs href and all that good stuff. So we can start our code here back inside line 23. href equals, we need to use single quotes because we're wrapping the whole thing on double quotes. We would break our double quotes. We would break our string if we use double quotes here. We're single quotes. And now here is where we need to do what we did previously for line 22 to get this to work, because we need to dynamically have it write for us the address that we've saved in the JSON file. I'm going to copy from up here. I'm going to copy the response object dot social network index dot URL. And we have our field as URL. This, of course, you should remember, will not work, just like it didn't work on the previous line, because that would render it as a string. It would render it exactly as that. It wouldn't use what's in that field in the JSON file. So we have to do the trick about, well, we need to end the string, concatenation, then continue the string. <coughs> After you've pasted in, this is what this is what holds the URL. After you've pasted that in within the single quotes, you need to back up to right after the first single quote of href, double quote to finish this part of the string to complete a little bit of valid HTML there. Space plus space concatenation. We're adding the HTML part. We're adding the JavaScript part, which then means at the end over here, this is no longer valid code. As before, the line before, we then add another plus, more concatenation, and a quote. And that finishes rendering the rest of the valid HTML, the angle bracket plus the single quote, which encompassed the whole URL. That should be enough. And what I was getting at about 
knowing what we were going to do, it might have been nice just visually have this part on its own line, and then on the next line have the actual social network name. This should work, but uh, just visually, it might have been nice to to break it there. So check your code, save it and run it in, in Firefox. The name of the network should be an active net an active link. Click should go to a real address. Obviously if you misspell it it might go to the wrong place, but it should want to go to a real web address. There's the code there. So it should automatically then take that URL from all of our items in the JSON file and appropriately add them. How does it know? Well, it's, it doesn't still really know. It's just that it's in the position of the array. In the array, the zeroth item is YouTube. And within that JSON sub-object, let's say, within that zeroth position of the JSON object, it has all of the values of that network. That's how it knows that that URL goes with that picture, which goes with that image, which goes with that uh, description, because it's in the zeroth position, or the third position, or the 99th position. So I should be able to click on any of these names, then opens up in the network. Remember, good practice is to have an external link opening in its own file. Oops, I mistyped that one. Oh yes, Tumblr addresses are not in that. Not in that. Uh, they're not written that way. But anyway, it's going off. It's trying to go off to the addresses, and it should. We we should set it up so that it opens in its own window. Remember we've got the property or the attribute target blank. To the href we should add a target blank. We just need to see, uh, we just need to look at where where our code what our code is and decide how to add it. You should see that on line uh, 23 where we've been writing the href attribute, we could add the target attribute. We've got the ending single quote, which is the partner of the opening single quote for href. Then you've got the angle bracket, which ends the a tag. So that means between the single quote and the angle bracket is where we could add target equals single quotes underscore blank. You should recall that target blank will let it create a new tab or window on that link. What's that? Picture. This one? This one over here? Or which extra single quote? This single quote goes back to this one right here for the atra. Is that is that the one you mean? Unfortunately, Notepad++ doesn't highlight the pairs of quotes, which would be nice, but that one uh, should be the closing single quote for the href. Just like this one up here is the closing single quote for the source.
right, so I've made that change, and I'll load them up. I'll click on Pinterest, opens in a new tab, target blank. One more thing that we'll do, and then we'll do a variation of this with our with our code, which is um, we it's best practice to have uh, to have uh, alt text on pictures. We haven't added alt text; it's just the picture. Um, based on what we have here we can set it up to have a little bit of alt text because we can borrow the, uh, the either the name of the network or its description or both I suppose but let's just say we're, we're gonna take the um, the name of the network and also display it as alt text you should see on line 22 this is where we're displaying the picture image source attribute so if we've got the image tag, we can add the alt attribute, the alt text. And here is where we've got the end of the single quote for part of source. So right where you've got the angle bracket and the single quote, you can add a space there, and we will write alt equals single quotes, single quote pair. And I'm going to use the name, the name field of my, my object. So within the alt, I'll just copy the response object dot name and paste it into the single quotes. And I have to do the same thing as before, where I have to then now finish the string, do some concatenation, and then complete the string again paste that in. That needs to be what's in the reference, not the reference itself. So end that double quote, because now that double quote ends this double quote, which started after that concatenation. I need another one, the plus. So here's this string that renders the HTML plus whatever the value of this index of name is, and then we need to complete that. If we did it over, over here, plus quote. This one, if we want to f test if it worked, you have to um, you have to view source. to view the source. Uh, it's not a visual thing. Remember, alt text is, um, is for accessibility. Not everyone uh, needs to see that. Uh, but here, if they had a screen, if a person had a screen reader, for example, the alt text is very valuable. So I have to look at it in the inspector and drill down here and see that there's a div. And so it's got um, the alt text. All of them should have it. So we made the, the name as an active link, and we added some alt text to each graphic. Um, let's pause there. Did everyone get that to, to work? What this is doing is it's just um, 
putting out all items in the in the database just sequentially from the zero zero width position of the index to whatever it is dot length which is in our case up to nine that's what our code is doing right here um, let's write a couple of comments then we'll comment this out then we'll do a variation with what we've got if, with our data next what we'll do is we will every time a button is clicked we will randomly display one of these social networks and now all the social networks are displayed let's see how else we can work with the data so before that let's write a few comments here um, Remember, you can write comments uh, on, on the lines above, below, to the left of the, or to the right, wherever we want. Let's say above this XHR open. This is open connection connection to the social JSON file. Backing up to the to the four, which is line twenty, we will say uh, loop through the data and display everything on screen sequentially. That's what that whole for loop block does. Line twenty-eight. Remind me, what does what is line twenty-eight doing right here? We're displaying the results on screen. We've got a div placeholder, and then we're writing the data. HTML data, we're writing it to that div. The data is all being stored in that one string. We're adding, looping through the string, adding to it, adding to it, adding to it, then we display it. So we'll say display the requested data on the screen. It should be looped through the data to be able to display on screen. It doesn't actually display. The for loop doesn't display it. Not until this line right here. We're, we're building what we will display, then we display it. Technically. If we back up then to that var creates a an object with uh, an object to use to display the data on screen. That string we've first created it, it's empty, then we use it in the form. Before that, we're able to uh, display the uh, parsed JSON string or variable that holds the parsed JSON string. We have all that data. We have JSON.parse, which then turns it into an object. Um, with, the, with those various properties. So it's been parsed. It's been turned into an object. Remember, we've got stringify, we've got parse. Parse turns it into an object. Stringify sort of deconstructs it into just a long sequence of, of, of text and numbers, a string. The string doesn't have any, any real meaning, but the object here does. It's an object with all of these properties. 
uh, image property, URL property, length property, description property. And it's all being, all that data is being stored in response object. That's how then we can get into it and pull out the description property. And I guess we can go back to this one and say preparing to open a connection to the JSON file. Okay, so this is what we've got <coughs> at this point. This whole loop, um, that was just to display everything. What I want to do is, is uh, deactivate it temporarily because I want to display the data in a different way. So I'm going to wrap the multi-line comment around it. Remember we've got slash asterisk for multi-line comment, double slash for single line comment, all that for loop will just turn it off for the moment. We'll back up uh, right <coughs> after the string, creating the string. We'll add this and create a new variable. Um, Call it random soch. This is what we're going to use to create a random number because we have these nine possible social networks. I want to set ourselves up now so that we have that same button, we have the same div placeholder, and what I want to do is click on the button to then randomly choose one of the networks from our possible list of nine. So here we would need a math object. This is built into um, JavaScript or math random. This will create a random number. But the basic of it is that it will create a random number between 0 and 1. It will create a fractional number. I want it to go um, based on the number of items in our in our array. So we need to multiply if I were to then multiply times 5, remember asterisk is multiplication. If I do math.random times 5, it'll choose a number between, uh, between 0 and 5. You know, if we have 9 items, then obviously we would put times 9. So choose any random number between 0 and 9. Now the problem is, I have 9 right now in my JSON file. But what if I add seven more networks? Or what if I subtract five networks? That data can be dynamic. So for me to hard code a value like that is not such a good idea. But I have the property about how many networks do I have to work with. So instead of a hard coded value, we can do response object. Dot social network dot length length is how many items do you have in the social network key we have keys and values remember our data is like this social network that's the key that's the table of all of these possibilities here so the length will be 9 So now we have a random number between uh, between uh, zero and nine, and um, that's getting close. But if you think about it again, remember the computer counts starts starts counting from zero. So the zeroth item would be the first item. 
The second item would be the first item. The ninth item would be the eighth item. So we need to deal a little bit with rounding because we might not really encompass the whole range properly from 0 to 8. If the number 9 shows up, well, there's, that would be the tenth item. There's no tenth item. Uh, in my array, it's really from 0 to 9. So if, if we have 9, that should be the tenth one. So what we'll do is we'll round, and we'll force it to round down. That will always include the lowest number could be a 0, and the highest number could be a 9. So we'll round down. The way we'll do this is let's wrap some parentheses around this whole expression here. Because what I want is for this expression to be evaluated random number times whatever, 9. I want all of that then, whatever number that is, because that would still be a fractional number, I want it rounded down to a whole number. So before that, parentheses, we, we will do the math object again, and this time floor. We've uh, used this one before, I believe. Math.floor, this is a method. So it would be, like I've got here, math.random method. We've got math.floor method, open close parentheses. But then inside of the parentheses I put, what are we rounding down? And so here we're getting some random number as a fraction and rounding it down to a whole number. So now it'll be between 0 and uh, 9, which will encompass what we actually have to work with. So here we've built a random number based on what we have possibly to work with. So now, with that, we can use that to pick one of the networks from our data set. Next line. Well, might as well add a comment here. Pick a random number based on total number of networks in JSON file. Similar to what we did with the for loop, creating a div, um, ending the div, and then stuff in the middle. We're going to do something very similar here as well because we've still got the string. We have not commented that out. It's been created here. We can reuse it. All of this will be ignored, so this will not be used. So we will start to build. Oops. We will start to build upon this string again. String plus equals. quotes div I know we're going to end we need to end it so we'll have slash div So we'll say then string plus equals, here's our image tag, src, single quotes. We display an image again. We need its source and we need the single quotes. This should look familiar. We're going to do something similar to what we did previously with a little twist. So inside of that we have response object. social network brackets dot image 
And over here, we were using the i, the index of whatever loop position we were in to say which network. Well, what do we need to do there then to have a different network appear every time? We have this random number that we've created, random soch. That will allow it to, for us to choose 1, or 7, or 0, or 2. Every time that we click, it'll create a new random number. This is all encompassed inside of that um, inside of that inside of that function, the get social. So every time we click, it should invent a new random number. Therefore, it'll choose a new random image. This, of course, needs to be set up so that it it doesn't display that, but actually shows what's inside of that reference. So we'll have to do the and the string concat uh, cat and close the string. like we did before. Save it and run it. So we're displaying an image like before we could copy and paste a bit, but this time we're not reliant on a on a sequence on a, of the index. We've got a random number that we're inventing. Every time we click based on the number of items in the social network JSON file. Let's pause there. Did everyone get a random social network to appear? Anyone need a little help? There's the code so far. A failure point could be the creation of the random number. Check up there. Of course, check your spelling. What I like to do is, for example, if I select random soch, double click it, it should then highlight it throughout your code for you to confirm you spelled it right. Because you might have called it, I don't know, random social. But you didn't create a random social variable, it's random soch. So that is a little bit of help there to, to see if you've created the right things. Spelling, of course, matters. That's one thing that this doesn't quite help you with. If I have this uppercase and lowercase, and I select it, I'll say, yep, there it is, and there it is. Not really. That one's capital letter, that one's not, which are different. We do, but notice it was, it, it's, it was lenient, and it didn't matter, but good point. Semicolon at the end there. File script is a little uh, lenient in that regard in that moment, so it worked, but we should put the semicolon there for consistency. And so the result is every time we click the button we get a new network.
Okay, so if it worked at this point, good. Um, we'll do a few more things and then I'll put my code in the folder. But uh, the point of this is that it's picking a random, uh, it's picking a random uh, network. Okay, I want to put the name of the network below it, but this time I won't put the description. I'm going to use the description as a tooltip of the picture. The tooltip is just a fancy way. You've probably seen that if you hover over a picture on a website, a little bit of text pops up. That's a tooltip. That's the title attribute. I want to add an alt attribute and a title attribute to the image eventually. And what the title attribute will display is the description. Before that, I want to add the text below the, uh, the picture. So that'll be similar to before. We'll do it slightly differently. We'll uh, to save us here with uh, with us to save us us putting um putting a break. Let's wrap a paragraph around the next uh, bit of text here. So next line, line uh, twenty eight, adding to the string again. Quotes semicolon. We're going to do the p tag. This will be a paragraph, uh, open and close paragraph. Within the paragraph, we're going to display the name of the network. So we can just copy from right above. We've got ourselves set up here to display the random network. And this will use the same random number at this moment that we've clicked. So if it randomly picks three, it'll use three for the image and the name. It's not that it's going to be a brand new random number. It'll reuse this, the current random number. So we can display its name. To display the, the same random number name and the same random number image at the same time. That, of course, we will need to do our trick again about having that be a reference rather than literal. So after the P, we will close the string, cat, and then cat, close string. So because we put in a p tag, gives us a space, it should display the same name down here as the picture. It's the same random number. That's how it quote unquote knows which one to use. It's just sequentially it's the same item in the in the in the array, in the JSON data. To that text down there, I want to make that an active link again. And then we will add the title attribute to the network icon so that the description appears once you hover over. Uh, let's make this text here an active link. So similar to before. Uh, we need to back up uh, line 28. We need to wrap the A tag around the A tag around the name. So we can get into this quote here, close the A tag, we're setting ourselves up to make that an active link.
Well, a tag is going to have an href attribute in uh, single quotes. We know where we're heading here, hopefully. We're going to use a response object again, the currently random one, to access its URL. So response object dot URL. We'll need to close the string, cat, etc. We've done that several times now. It should, it should click what we're doing here. Close that. Plus, plus, open that. Make sure, of course, this is the URL. We know it's going to be an external link. So when we did that down there on the for loop, we also added target blank. We'll do that before we check our code. So still inside of the a tag, after a single quote for href, we we'll write target blank. Target underscore blank. If I check that result, it gives me random networks. There, the link is active. I click on any one of these. In a new window, it opens up. So it's very reminiscent of what we did uh, in the for loop, but now it's based on randomness. Next, we will add the title attribute to the image so that the uh, when we hover over, you'll get a little tooltip there. And do we add title to the image or do we add it to the href? Let me just confirm that. So we need, we need to add the title attribute. We haven't really dealt with title attributes before. We've dealt with alt attributes, the alt text. Title is related to that, although title is not an accessibility feature. It's, it's an extra bit of a design and such. It's not required. Alt is required. We saw how to do that a moment ago, but this time we will add title. Uh, on line 27, where we're displaying the image title equals single quotes. And right here, we're going to now use the desk uh, property of the response object. <coughs> response object random dot desk. And I need to do the same thing, close those strings and such. Now, based on the network that I select, hover over, there's a description, another random network, there's a description. When I hover over the picture, that's what the title attribute is doing. It's a way to display, in a very basic way, this tooltip. There's other more complex ways, of course. We can use uh, jQuery Mobile to display some cool animated ones. But here with this basic thing that we're doing, whatever description we wrote, it then appears above the picture when you hover.
and you could figure out then to add the uh, alt attribute like we did previously so you could do that on your own but at this point I think we're, we're getting the idea here that basically the JSON file this is a form of a database it's got all of these fields and all of this data and we could add many more we can invent one more field at the end or the beginning or anywhere within the object make up a brand new key and give it some sort of value and then write our code to access it. We're going to do something similar to that, to this, but a little more powerfully um, when we talk about PouchDB very soon because we'll want to save multiple bits of data, retrieve the data, edit the data. We haven't set up anything here to edit the data. What if I wanted to edit these descriptions? I haven't programmed any of that. Uh, and right now this is based on a predetermined data set whatever is already in the JSON file I want users to add new data to the data set so we'll need input fields uh, and um, we will see then as we work on our PouchDB version 1.0 uh, we'll be able to do all of that then when we get to our PouchDB version 2.0 which should be on day one of next month we will then integrate it into our app we're going to work on pouch separately to understand how that works then we'll integrate it back into our app so that our app is able to save data class data instructor data etc but at this point I'll put my code in the network <coughs> folder in a moment but any general questions at this point does this make sense any questions I'm going to say this is the final version of, of my project, so I will add this to the network folder. Let's take our first break. It's 7.05. We'll be back at 7.16, and we'll go on.